Hello and welcome to an introduction to programming using Visual Basic exercises for beginners. This exercise is called Membership List. We are to write a menu-driven program to manage a membership list. Assume that the names and phone numbers of all members are stored in alphabetical order by last name then first name in the text file called memberphones.txt. Each record consists of two fields, a name field and a phone number field. The names should appear in a list box when the form is loaded. When a name is highlighted, both the name and phone number of the person should appear in the text boxes at the bottom of the form. To delete a person, we have to highlight his or her name and click on the delete menu item. To change either a person's name or a phone number, make the corrections in the text boxes and click on the menu item called modify. And to add a new member, type the person's name and phone number in the text boxes and click on the menu item Add. When the Exit menu item is clicked, the new membership list should be written to the file and the program should terminate. So here is a form. We will load the memberphone.txt file and display the names in the list box. And we have a, a menu strip that has Update and Exit. And Update has a drop down for the Modify, Add and Delete. And when those are clicked, associated function or a sub procedure will be executed. So I'm in Visual Studio 2015, so let me show you the menu, here's the update and exit, and the update has the modify with the F1 as the shortcut, add F2 shortcut and delete with F3 shortcut. I can show you the whole strip, if I click the little arrow and click edit items, you can see that there are two items on the menu strip, and when I select the update tool strip, you can see over here when it says drop down items for the collection, when I click that, I have the modify, add and delete. And you can see that there are the shortcuts for F1 for the modify, F3 for delete and F2 for add. Alright, so let's start coding. I'll double click the form. And the first thing, I'm going to create a form level variable. That will be the file itself. I will create an array called file and I will read all lines from the member phones.txt. Before we do that, let me just show you the file itself, the text file. It's very simple. There's a name, comma, and a phone number. And you can see that uh, the name itself is the first name, space, and then there's the last name. So to create the array that reads the file, I will simply do the io.file.read all lines. So here's my array. It's a string that will have each line in it in the form of array. So each index will hold one line. and the next thing, I'm going to create a sub procedure that will display the data from the file in our list box. Because every time we execute either add, modify or delete, we want to keep the list box updated. So we will call this display sub procedure every time we perform any function from the drop down menu. And the whole display sub procedure will simply add each line, but only the name, not the phone number. The exercise wants us to add only the name into the list box. So we will simply do a for each loop through the file and we'll split it by the comma and display the name, which would be the index of zero of the split. And as we are looping through the through the names or through each line, we will do the split. So n dot split and we are adding the name. So we'll split it by comma character and add in the zero index. In order to keep the names ordered alphabetically, we can use the method associated with the list box called sorted. We'll set it to true. You can see that it says gets or set a value indicating whether the items in the list box are sorted alphabetically. Now another way to do this would be to use a link query and simply use order by. And once we update the list box, we can now clear the name and the phone number. And the phone number is not a text box, it's a masked text box. So we don't actually ever have to worry about whether the user enters numbers because it only expects digits. So, but the name for it is MTB for masked text box phone and we'll clear that as well. And one thing, before we run the loop, we want to clear the list box because we don't want to add to the list box. We want to replace the old content with the new one. So we will do items that clear for the list box. And this is going to be our display sub procedure. So the next thing, I'm going to double click the list box and go to the selected index change. Every time we display the names and we, and we click any of the names, we want to display the name and the phone number in the text boxes. 
So when we click a name from the list box, the name should appear here and the phone number in the other text box or the masked text box. So I'm going to use a link query for that and I'm going to query from uh, n for name in file and we need to separate the name and the phone number so we will do a variable let I'll call it name and like before it will be the split with the index of 0 and similarly the phone will be split with the index of 1 and we want to pick up only one name and that's the name that uh, is equal to the name that is being selected so we'll use a WHERE clause and we will match the name which is a variable from the query with the list box name selected now name is a string selected item is an object so we'll have to convert it to string and at the end we'll select both the name and the phone and now we can uh, display the name and the phone number in the text boxes and the way I'm gonna do it is to use the query dot to list so when I use query dot to list I can now use an element add method so if I do element add you can see that it returns the element at a specified index in a sequence now that's only one element in a sequence it's to select for both name and phone so that's only index of zero for the specified index however when I use that I can use dot and you can see that I have the name and phone available because both of these have the index of zero sequence but they are separated by the select statement that we had in our query we selected the name and the phone so now we have access to that so I'll use the dot name and for the phone it will be exactly the same except it will be dot phone of course so we can now actually test that uh, the first thing I have to do is when I go to the form load event I have to call the display method or sub procedure so the names are displayed and now when I test it I should have the names displayed and be able to click them and the name and phone number should appear as you can see and they do in the text boxes so this part is working so far so now we can go and code the adding modifying and deleting records from the text file so let's go to the form I'll click the update and let's start with add I'll double click that and in our menu for the add we will simply add the name and the phone number that the user enters into the text boxes so the user will type a name in the name text box phone number and then we click add or F2 the name will be added so the first thing we need to do is of course to make sure that the user entered name and the phone number in the text boxes so we'll do that if statement and if user did not enter one of these items that we need we will simply display a message box saying that it's an invalid input and if everything is okay we can now add the name the first thing we need to do is to expand our array our array has a set number of names or records or indexes and now we are adding another one so we have to use the redeem and uh, we need to preserve everything that's on the file right now or in our array and just add a new record to it so we'll do redeem and we will do the preserve keyword and we are of course using the file array for that and we are adding names so we will do the file dot count we can do file dot count because uh, by default we start from index zero and count actually gives us all the elements so this way we add one more index to an array while we are preserving the data that's already in the array so now we can add the actual name from the text boxes so our file with the index which is now the last index in the array so we'll do use the file dot count minus one because now we are doing indexes not the actual number of records or elements in the array and this one will simply hold the txt name dot text and will concatenate the comma because that's the way the records are set in our text file and will concatenate the phone number and after we do that we want to update our list box so we will call the display method now this only adds the name and phone number to the array it doesn't add it to the actual text file that's going to happen only when the user exits the actual program then everything will be written into the member phones.txt so the next let's double click the delete and to delete a member we need to first select the member from the list box when we click it we'll populate the text box for the name and the phone number and that's going to be the name that we are deleting so I'll create a variable I'll call it name to delete and it will simply equal the 
selected item from the members list box. And of course it has to be converted to string. So now of course I have to make sure that user actually selected any name from the list box. So I will do an if statement and check if the deleted name is empty or not. If it's not, then we can proceed. Otherwise we will display a message box saying that the user needs to select a name to delete. Now to select the name to delete, we're going to actually do it in reverse. We are going to select, select all the names we want to keep. So we'll do a link query and just like before I will use n for names in file and I will create a variable for the name which is going to be again just a simple split by comma with the index of zero and of course the next thing I'm going to create a variable for the phone and it's going to be the split with the index of one and now I'm going to use a where clause to select all the names except the one that we just created so we will select all the names we want to keep or in other words all the names except this one because that one will be deleted so we will do where the name is not equal the name to delete and at the end we'll select all the records in other words we will select the n and n holds the names and the phones of all the people or members that we want to keep so now we can uh, write those back to our file array but first we need to redeem the file array because now we deleted one so we will simply shrink it by one index so we will redeem but this time we are not preserving the data we are going to simply override it with all the data from the query because like I said these data now have all the names and phone numbers of the members we want to keep so we will do the file and the new upper bound will be the count minus one and now we will assign the query to the file so we will use the file equals the query and we will convert the query to an array so that will automatically split it uh, into an array and at the end of course we will update the display in our list box by calling the display method and last thing I'm going to click the modify first thing we'll make sure that the user actually selected any member to modify and to do that we'll simply check if the text is not empty remember we populate in the text boxes by actually clicking on the list box so if we do an if and check if the members text is not empty that means something was clicked and if something was clicked on in the list box then the text boxes are populated if not then of course we will display a message box and to modify it we will simply use a for loop and we will loop through the file and we are obviously looping to the end of the file so we'll use the count minus one since we are looping through the indexes and starting from index zero now we will match the name from the file array with the name that is being selected from the list box so we'll do an if and if the file with the index of i so we only care about the name so we will use the split just like we did before and we are splitting by comma and again it's index of zero for the name so if this name equals the lst members dot text which is the name that is being selected from the uh, list box and once we find the name we can now assign changes that the user made in the text boxes for the name and the phone number to our file with the index of i so file with the index of i will now equal we will override whatever value there was we'll override it with the name and we'll add the comma and we'll add the phone number so if the user changed the name or the phone number or both now this record will be assigned to the file with the index of i as we are looping through them and after the for loop we will of course update the display and there's one more thing and that's the exit exit doesn't have a drop down so i'll just double click that and on exit the text file for the members phone.txt will be overwritten with all the values that we added or modified or deleted from the file before remember the file the original file was loaded into file array and now that file array holds all the new and updated data and we will override the old members phones.txt with the new data so we will simply use the io.file.write all lines and we are writing into the members phones.txt and we are writing from the file array and once we do that we write the file we exit the program because obviously the user clicked on exit it's not just to write the data but also to exit the program so i will do end all right so let's test it all right so you can see that uh, 
here's my names and they show in the text boxes as I click them. So let's just add a name. I'll add a name Pavel and let's do the phone number 1112222 and I'll click update and click add. And Pavel has been added to the list box and you can see that when I click it the phone number and name text boxes are populated. So let's just modify it. I'll click and add Pavel Smith and instead of uh, clicking modify let me just click F1 and when I click and when I press that you can see that Pavel Smith is now in the list box not just Pavel and again the name and the phone number are displayed. Now I'm going to delete a name let's say Herbert Norton and to delete I press F3 and he's gone from the list box but at this point when I close it when I just exit without uh, actually clicking exit we did not modify the actual text file that remain the same. In order to do any changes to the text file the user has to actually click the exit. So let's just add my name again and a number and now when I click add it's added and I click exit now my members phones contains my name as well. So everything's working as expected. I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next video.